Welcome to Dry Hollow Homestead. I'm Danielle and I'm going to show you how I make four sourdough sandwich loaves in the simplest way possible. The first step in this sourdough loaf is to add 400 grams of starter to your bowl and I do weigh this out for the first few ingredients the starter and the water, a thousand grams of water. And then I do not for the flour because um, I've just done it so many times, I know how many cups it does make. But I used to until um, I started to multiply this recipe so much that my little scale couldn't handle it. So this is 11 cups of all purpose flour. And then I'm going to feed my starter. You do need an established starter. Uh, I can show you sometime, but this came straight out of my fridge and made four perfectly delicious loaves of bread that you're gonna see. So I just feed my starter, let it set out on the counter overnight, and then I stick it in the fridge the next morning. That's all I do to keep that starter going. And so I'm gonna mix this, this up. I have a Danish dough whisk that really does good for um, my sourdough. I do enjoy using that. But then there's nothing better than the tools God gave you, your hands. I'm not actually kneading this, I'm just kind of incorporating it together. This is not a knead recipe, you do not need uh, the sourdough. Um, but I'm just kind of getting it all together, mixed in well. We have not added the salt, you need to let this rest now for one hour. And then we're coming back in and adding 40 grams of sea salt. I use pink Himalayan sea salt, and I'm pinching it in. This is how I get it incorporated. Sometimes I've not done this and I've had pink lines of salt in my bread, so do this well. <laughs> Take your time and mix this in good. And then I start to do the technique called stretch and fold. And you're going to do a stretch and fold like this. Go at, like on all four corners of your bowl around and stretch it up and pull it over. And then you are going to set a timer for 30 minutes and come back and do the same thing. We need to do that four times. I have skipped and only done it twice and it's turned out well. Um, but the, the best is to do four times. So then you would go set a timer for 30 minutes, come back. Here I am doing it again. And you can kind of see that the dough does start to look different. It starts to have more elastic in it as you're doing this. This gets more of those air bubbles in. And 30 more minutes. There we go. And I then we are going to, after we've done it four times, we let it set on the counter for an hour before we put it in the fridge overnight. This is the next morning. <clears throat> My sourdough has the starter is ready to be popped in the fridge. It really it came out and leaked all over my counter. It's very active and bubbly. And so I let that I had come to room temperature. It took about two hours before I started to get my dough out of the bowl. So I got it out of the fridge, let it set for two hours, and now I'm going to divide it up and shape it. So this makes the four, so I'm going to divide it into the four. And then I shape it into the sandwich loaves, just in my regular bread pans. Um, at this point, I have changed my mind and made big, long French loaves. And that was delicious. And I've actually made this into um, in my bole and made the round, you know, in my cast iron, the beautiful uh, French, <laughs> I don't know what they're called, but they're delicious. This is the second time I'm shaping them here. You can also stop at this point and make them into um, dinner rolls, just dinner rolls. You can shape them into that at this point. So you can do whatever, you could do half and half, you could do two into sandwich dinner rolls and two into sandwich bread rolls. I don't try to pop all of my bubbles. I really want them to show up later when I bake because I still want that sourdough part. Uh, but my kids enjoy the sandwich bread. It's a little easier to eat for them than the hard crust of that um, artisan bread that I also do. And it's gonna set now for a few more minutes. Okay. So this has sat out, these four loaves have sat out now and risen now for their second time after I've shaped them. Uh, they're still a little squishy. I'm gonna go ahead and get them in my pans. My oven is preheated to 475. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the oven probably for about 40 minutes and I'll give them a check. That's probably too close. I'm not particular about my pans. I really like um, 
stoneware, but I only have one of those right now. And I have glass, I have Nordic ware, I think it's like an aluminum one, and then uh, Chicago metallic. They really, I kind of like this because it gives it really good straight edges, but I'm not going to do it at all. So I'm going to get parchment paper, line this in with parchment paper. And what I do to do that is I take the, take the parchment paper and crumble it up and then spread it out. It spreads a little easier. Then I'm going to score the top, just simply three lines. And then I'm going to stick them in the oven. Sometimes I even let them be shaped and put in my pans and then I allow them to rise a third time after being shaped. I didn't this time and it, it worked out just fine. Sometimes I think about it, sometimes I don't. That's why I love doing it this way. It's so versatile and it turns out great every single time. And it, I can make different things if I decide to. The most important thing is to set a timer because there are so many different like 30 minutes and then stretch and fold, 30 minutes stretch and fold, just set a timer, you will not remember. And I'm scoring the bread here. This is just giving it a place to actually rise up from. And yep, yeah, here we go. Okay, it has been right at 40 minutes. I'm going to check on these, see what they look like. Sounds pretty hollow inside. I'm gonna go ahead and get them out. Let them dry. Uh, marble to cool. You only want them to set for a few minutes in their um, paper here, and then you want to take them out and let them cool off on the counter outside of their pans. Okay, I'm going to pop these out of their pans. You don't want to keep them in there for very long because they will start to sweat. And I reuse my parchment paper several times so it starts to fall apart. So I don't really like using that just once. So um, they're hot, but finagle them out. Yeah, I like that one pretty good. Um, it does make a harder crust there. The other one I really don't like is the glass. Um, so that's my least favorite. I wait and then use that one whenever something breaks or I, like I used to have another cast iron. It's not a cast iron. I'd like to try cast iron. Maybe I'll do that sometime. But stoneware. I used to have more stoneware. So this is, these are done. They need to cool completely before you slice them. I usually rub some butter on top and then I will slice them. When I do that, I'll bring them back because we are also going to freeze. Uh, half of this. As a dairy cow owner, I am definitely putting my homemade butter on this bread. It makes it even better. And I want to give you a chance right now. Please subscribe. I remind you to please subscribe, like if you like this kind of content. I'm going to keep bringing them to you. If you want a how to on how to do a sourdough starter, let me know in the comments below. I will show you some time my bagels. Um, to go great with that cream cheese I showed you. We've already done this butter together. This is probably actually the butter that we did together. So let me know if you enjoy this. I should have probably cut deeper scores into that ear, that uh, loaf right there because you see the ear that popped up? That just meant that we did not give give it enough space through the cuts. Now comes the hardest part of this whole process. You must let them cool completely.
Okay, so we have it all sliced up. I sliced it up before I put it in the freezer. These came with my food saver, uh, and I have reused them over and over again just for bread or bagels. Um, but it has this little hole here that you use the adapter to suck air out, and it reseals. So these are really handy. Uh, I feel like they are much better than throwing them away. So I can usually fit one loaf in. Okay, this one is very warm, so I'm not sure how many more uses I'm gonna get out of it. But I'm going to try again. This is probably being used like 10, 15 times. Maybe even more. So I do this probably once a week. Eventually it'll probably get a hole and stop sealing. In there, everyone is watching. All right, good enough. Try to get the air out before I even start a little bit. Um, plug in your food saver, that's a good step to keep in mind. So, you have to lock it to use this little contraption. Something is moving in there. I hope that's okay. You put it down on that little circle and not working. It's working kind of. Maybe I have a hole in the bed. I had to say something. Oh. Oh. Alright. This might be the one we keep in the cabinet. We'll see. This one um, looks a lot newer. This is how it's supposed to work. These, this makes a delicious bread. Um, this was that uh, metal pan. It got a little browner than the rest of them on the bottom. When I want to use it, I just set it out. Usually if I like get it out at night, by morning it is ready. I mean, even if it is totally frozen when you open it, because they're already cut, you could pretty much like put a butter knife between them, separate them, put them in the oven to toast them up. That's what we do. We don't have a toaster because your toasters fit two or four slices of bread at one time. Um, I don't I usually make two or four slices of toast. Six, eight, ten. 12 slices at one time. So we use our oven for toasting. So that's going in the freezer. 